So I'm here with Ray from Collier Arbor Care, which is a division of Bartlett Tree Experts. And Ray, we're going to be talking about some of those weird things that happen in a garden with like pests and disease, right? Right. Um, basically, in at this end of April, this is um, all the plants now are starting to put out new growth. Right. This is when the you know the pests are starting to merge too. They see the new foliage, so then that's their uh, their salad. They're right. they're coming out right now. <laughs> that's the good stuff they're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, first things first is uh, if you see think you have a pest problem, you got to properly identify what's right. actually attacking your plants. Sometimes what looks like a pest problem is not actually a pest problem. Because there's a lot of stuff that happens in nature with pest and disease, but some of it is is really pretty difficult to define which is which. Exactly, so that's where it's good to, if you're not sure what you're looking at, to get a good sample, put it in a, in a bag and take it to a, you know, a good nurseryman or an arborist and right. they can look at it and then uh, help you identify what's going on. And since you have a bag, I'm assuming you have some examples Yeah, I have a few it. samples here to yeah. kind of show you what I'm talking about. And that looks like a laurel. Yep, so this is English laurel. Um, this was a client we had, um, they called us, they thought they had a severe um, pest problem. Their wow. gardener said, oh, you must have root weevils attacking this plant. But actually, when, when I looked at it, I realized you see your holes here, that's not root weevil damage. They'll kind of notch in the sides, but this uh, holes you see there, that's actually caused by a disease. Uh -huh. it, does, it looks like bugs, but it's not. Um, what that does, the disease kills it, and then what happens later is it, it'll kill spots in the leaf, and later those, le those spots will fall out, and that's what gets this um, effect. So what happens is if you um, spray this with a pesticide, uh -huh. you probably end up just killing the beneficial insects and then you'll end up having mite problems later, so right. that just makes the problem worse. So the solution is you want to spray with a fungicide and that's what will clear this up. And so this is two years ago, see, and then this year... And there's the new growth. Yeah, the, from the last year, now there's no more shot holes. So that, take care that took care of that problem. And, and so you have to know that you're shooting for something called shot hole virus rather than something like a, 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 a bug of some kind that chews on the leaf. And if you don't exactly. know that, then you're not only, you're not doing anything to make it better and you're wasting your money. You're wasting your money, yeah. you're make, okay. you can make the problem worse. And what else do you have in there? Um, another problem here. Um, that looks like a hydrangea. Yep, hydrangea. Um, often people think they got more insect damage there. See all the holes in the leaves? Right. Um, but actually what's caused, what caused that was hail. Yeah, I, I, that would make total sense because they're so big leaves. Yep. Yeah. Well, the new leaves are just tender coming out. We've had a lot of hail this spring uh -huh. and basically just come through and they're just black, tearing holes through the leaves on that and then, then bruising there too. So again, pesticide will not help that. Mm. And if you, if you don't know this, if you're making assumptions as a gardener and you're not sure, going to a place like y'all and getting the right information on this one that you don't have to use any money then to spray for that because there's exactly. it's nature. <laughs> it's nature. But the only thing you could do is really plant your hydrangeas under a tree to protect it. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, pesticide is not going to help you there. And then you have one more here? One more. Ah, the beautiful roadies. Yep. So rhododendron. Mm. Um, we often get calls on these. Um, they're turning yellow, not sure what's happening right. there. Um, what we see is these little tiny dots on there called stippling. Uh -huh. And basically what happens, you can turn that over. And you see in the back, there's more evidence of what's going on. Yeah. All those little spots there. Basically that's all caused by um, azalea lace bugs. And uh, right now, you know, I can, I can look at it with a magnifying glass and you won't see anything right now. It's a little bit too early. What happens is they lay their eggs right inside. They'll penetrate the leaf. So if you try to spray that right now, Doesn't do it. it won't do anything. Yeah, it's just gonna come off. But later, uh, once these bloom, and the new leaves start coming out, that's when these start hatching out, and that's when you want to get out your, uh, if you want to be organic, get your neem oil, Yeah. spray the bottom of the leaves, and that'll you know, clean those up. Yeah, because the top of them, I mean, that could be spider mites, it looks like that kind of damage on top, all of that. So there's, there's a lot of things that can happen in a garden, and it just is really good to make sure you know what you're doing. Yeah, you gotta know which pest you're going after, otherwise you're not gonna have very good success. Mm. So now, Ray, um, one of the things, though, that, that that we have talked about before you and I is that there is there's also some real concern if you're a homeowner just doing this on your own at the time of year when buds are set and about ready to open you, you don't want to be spraying those do you? Yeah you got to be very careful using uh, insecticides on when plants are starting to flower that's when the pollinator, pollinators are out right. and even if you don't see them out if you spray that flower the, the, pen, the 
bees and things that come to feed in that flower could be killed, so you gotta be very careful what you're spraying. So ideally, you rather use alternative methods to right. control that. And then I see a couple of uh, containers in your hand. What are those? Exactly, for um, almost every uh, pest you have in your garden, there's, there's another insect that'll eat that pest. So uh -huh. rather than using a pesticide, what we like to do is use beneficial insects. Nice. Basically, they're, they're already out there, but just kind of supplement what's already there to, before they damage your plants. And, and what are these that you're holding? So this, these looks like a little salt pepper shaker here. They do. <laughs> yeah. This is a, these are predatory mites. Um, bees, you just shake it on the plants, just shake or two for each plant. And, uh -huh. and there's, there's like over a thousand uh, beneficial um, uh, mites in there that, nice. that'll eat the bat, you know, the spider mites. And they're, they're so tiny, I don't know if you can even see them on the lid there, but. They look like they, specks. Yeah, they're yeah. tiny, so you can barely see but them. But they really do have actual bodies, don't they? <laughs> they, they do, yep, there, you give them under a microscope and you can see them, but the, these are great because since we've been using these, we haven't well, had, that, had to use insecticide. Yeah, exactly, if that's control. the salt, then what is the pepper here? Okay. <laughs> that's here's, what I'm calling them. <laughs> here's, here's the pepper. These are called rove beetles. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with uh, root weevils. Right. Notching on their plants, they're perennials, rhododendrons, azaleas, hydrangeas, these little guys, you just lay these down on the ground and they're like little beetles that'll come out. And, and you can see them yeah, crawling around in there. I can actually see movement. Yeah, they'll go going down through the soil and they'll grab those little grubs there and, and eat them before they can attack your plants. So, you know, you guys do all kinds of, of, of maintenance and care, but you also offer a lot of the more organic and natural stuff involved too, don't exactly. you? Exactly, there's, especially important is there's people want to see less right. pesticides and right. more, you know, organic or or beneficial type insects. So that's been a, a big, good selling point for us. Well, there you have it. You know, every one of us that love to garden really want our gardens to be beautiful year round. And we want to be aware of things we can do to make them healthier and more sustainable. So for more information, as always, we invite you to go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. You can give them a call, look them up and get some information. Make your own garden a little bit more beautiful. Thank you so much for your time, Ray. Great, thank you. <laughs>